How you guys? How you doing? Y'all doing all right? I hope you're doing fantastic. Finally, I get to put out this content in which I have several clips over the course of many weeks that I try to put out, but I couldn't because I was fighting this one case and jumping right into this for y'all to have an understanding of what's been going on because as I mentioned before, normally when I go through different things, a lot of things, social media is not the first place that I run to. So at the beginning of the year, end of January early February I went on this bomb vacation to Jamaica for one week I wasn't by myself and the person that I was with they very much needed a vacation just as much as I did the vacation was great because I got to do things I wouldn't have been able to do if I was by myself and this park one of my highlights but moving on there was a situation that transpired in which I was going to go check on my truck before I was traveling and I found that my truck was broken into Yes, I've mentioned this, and those who are unaware, this is a brief recap. My truck was broken into off of University City Boulevard, where the Target and the Defy Gravity Shopping Center is located. Cameras around the building and everything. And in looking and inspecting everything that was going on, my airlock was damaged. The locking mechanism was damaged to where I couldn't unlock it move it relocate my truck to another location i didn't have enough time for that i hadn't packed i hadn't got myself together everything was just last minute at its finest so i'm debating back and forth on whether i want to contact cmpd charlotte mecklenburg police department and file a police report granted there are other trucks parked here for those perfect people oh you should have been parked at a secure lot i was you know secure lots are not as secure as they seem and i end up moving my truck over here Long story short, I'm on the phone with an investigative tech who works with the CMPD, and he's reassuring me, you know, when you come back from vacation, because I told him I was traveling and I couldn't move it. When you come back from vacation, everything is going to be fine, you know, just pretty much worry about it after you come back. That I did. I went on vacation, everything I thought was great, come back, my truck is gone. <laughs> the night that, February 4th, around 12, 27 a.m., there was a situation that was going on in which there was a lot of cops out there. I ended up flagging someone down to figure out, like, yo, where's my truck at? And eventually I got on the phone with the right people and I found out XXX trucking towing, in which you really should be mindful of, that they told my truck, shady company at its finest. And when I say karma works, karma works when we least expect it. When we least expect it. So the truck, the company told my truck, and they want $3,500 to for me to get my truck back. When I say highway robbery, this is the type of company that they go around Charlotte and they post their own towing signs and tow your vehicle. When you have a truck and your trailer, like 6000 6200 it's all in paperwork. It's there. People are paying these prices to these shady people in which they will be taken down one of these days. So moving on from that, I made arrangements to go pick up my truck on like February 6th, February 7th, one of those days. And I wasn't by myself, of course. And like when I say they're shady, they do business. It's just dirty, man. They're really, really dirty. And even the lot that they was at is shady as well. So I made arrangements to go pick up my truck. And the whole situation was just funny. So the person I was with and myself, we just took matters into our own hands. And granted, the police, them, everyone has my information of my license plate. So it's not much that the situation could have worked in our favor, right? Long, long, long story short, eventually I got my truck back and I paid them the $3,500. Come June, June, I have to go to court because, again, we had took matters into our own hands. And this woman, she wants... $1,700 back so for y'all to get an understanding of this I tried to seek vengeance I wanted these people to pay for what they did eventually they did damage my truck in retaliation of what um, we done and it's kind of bittersweet in a sense but anywho 
we went to court and she wants the seventeen hundred dollars back i had a lawyer defending me on this case because i was charged with something right and i'm like i'm not paying her that's dead i'm not paying her the money back if anything that seventeen hundred dollars could go towards the damages of my truck so i pay this man money who's supposed to be defending me and he's like you should just pay her but i paid you i hired you to defend me he was more so nervous of the simple fact that if she didn't show up case close case dismissed he has nothing else to worry about but it was the fact that she showed up and she wants money back again the seventeen hundred dollars came from i was trying to seek vengeance i was trying to put take matters into my own hands and like tarnish this company it was once i put it in god's hands or i put it in the most highs i was like i'm gonna let the most high deal with it seventeen hundred dollars just reverted back to me explain it however you it's hard to explain it is but moving forward past this i didn't pay the money we're gonna go to trial i was like we could take it to trial it is what it is because y'all damaged my truck if anything that i i deserve that 1700 september 21st come no one showed up to court no one showed up to court because the case wasn't about the money the case was about the charge she didn't care about the charge she cared about the money I end up winning the case. The case is closed, is done, is settled. And today they have multiple claims in which I know who has claims against them. I'm, not, I'm talking about thousands, tens of thousands of dollars against this towing company. And I hope each and every single one of them win. I don't be wishing bad upon no one. I don't be wishing like ill will on no one. But the way karma works, karma doesn't miss no one. It doesn't. So that's why it's so important like treat people the way that we want to be treated because if not it's gonna come finding us in in the ways that we least expect it it does I'm not with the whole oh I have your best interest at heart type of verbal verbal validation I need you to show me if people cannot show me they have my best interest at heart through their actions it doesn't suffice that's where we at today that's the situation that's the story be very cautious aware of where you park in the city of charlotte where i park now is way more secure but these are the type of people this is what they do this is what i've been dealing with i'm dealing with much more but it's always somebody who's dealing with a lot more than what i'm dealing with in which i just don't talk about i get through what i go through and i hope that this is a lesson for you because again as a driver we want to park where it's convenient where we have a peace of mind, where it's safe. Safe and sound, no issues. Parking already is already is a hassle. So that's the story and let's get into the rest of it. When I say some things we could do ourselves, baby, oh my goodness. Instead of removing both of these airlines, I just removed this one. That's the part where it came from. My hands and wrists were small enough to get through that line. We're good, we're good. By the grace of the good Lord, two sensors, one here, this one here. Yeah, man. A little quick, quick. God only knows how much this would have been. But yeah, this, I use that to loosen up this line here. And this right here, baby. Yes, sir. At first, I was hoping it was one of the fuses that was located inside of the PowerNet distribution box, PNDB. But it ended up being the whole box itself. I was under a load heading straight to Jacksonville, Florida. And I did replace it right outside of the Freightliner in Charlotte, North Carolina. In high hopes everything was just going to work out. And in my case, the truck was shutting off while I was driving at 65 miles per hour. And shutting right back on. After three to four loads, eventually I did make it home to Charlotte to replace that. But in this case, on this day, I ended up doing a reset to reset my 70 hour working clock in Madonna, Georgia. I had picked up in Savannah after Jacksonville, Florida, and I was heading up to Huntsville, Alabama. So it was either sit down in Alabama for the weekend or Georgia. I went out with a friend of mine to Daiquiri Factory. It was an amazing experience. And for those who want to bypass a reset, all you have to do is drive about eight to eight and a half hours a day for your working clock to run consistently and constantly. You don't ever have to reset. I believe it was about a month and a half, roughly, to where I was like, my body was talking to me. Girl, go sit down in this beautiful hotel, Best Western, out here. It was just super clean great vibe and eventually i had to do laundry it's very rare i do laundry out on the road because i'm never out on the road this long but in this case and with these circumstances i did have to do laundry and get some things cleaned up with my sheets and everything it being so hot muggy and sticky ugh, terrible 
but this was my situation on this particular weekend ended up getting some good food a good heavy meal you know I try to stick with some heavy carbs to accommodate my weight and yeah that was my weekend my first free set being out here on the road I've mentioned this before I'm not the healthiest eater I do try to just eat things that sustain me but it was a reset that was needed I normally fill up at TA and Petro because that's where I get the best fuel discounts with TCS and Starbucks is great they're overpriced for no reason but they do have some great drinks and things to eat when I do get the chance to stop The mocha cookie crumble is one of my favorite cold drinks. If you don't like chocolate, you won't like this drink. Eventually move on to Tennessee. I was in need of a PM. I'm talking about like 30,000 miles overdue. I've never went that long with the PM and I will never wait that long because my fuel filters were so dirty, but I was in need to change something this day. I can't tell y'all the last time I was out here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, baby. This is what we're doing for our meal. <laughs> the most I'll put in noodles is probably like hot sauce, but like a little bit of spicy. But yeah, it's kind of a meal on the go. Literally, a meal on the go. I've never been to this truck stop, I know that much. Let's go. Oh boy, what a day, what a day, what a day. Thank you. Where are we going? Michigan, baby. Shifting gears for those who are still with me. Hopefully you're still with me now. A business name change. For those who are interested to changing it from Dope Boys Trucking to Two Men in Trucking. However, say you have an EIN that you have established in 2015 and because of longevity purposes, you want to hold on to that EIN and everything that you have established from that time frame. You go to the IRS.gov's website and you put in a request for a business name change. It is a 60 day to 3 month waiting period but it is worth it to me in which I did because I get to keep my same EIN number that I've established for so long with a different business name. You do not have to get a new EIN for a new name if you don't want to. Especially if you're trying to do or if you have bigger plans for your business if you want to expand your businesses through like loans or grants or whatever case may be so food for thought for those who are interested let me know if you have any questions about that now i get weekly freight rate updates from direct freight in which we are able to kind of gauge where we need to be at or where we should be at when it comes to some of these freight rates up on the screen as y'all can see yeah, I don't have to share with me, but maybe some of us or some of you all are in the average range or below the average range. But here are a few tips that may help you be more successful even within these market conditions. Number one, have multiple or have access to multiple load boards. Currently, right now, as of today, I'm using DAT. I use 123 load board trucker tools i use rxo rxo i recently just got hip to them based off of i had three loads back to back that i booked with them and with who i'm working with at least on to i i pretty much was granted access to them it's very imperative having access to multiple load boards because there are some loads that are posted on dat that are not posted on trucker tools or trucker path you know so having variety is key because you just gain more access the next thing is having your truck posted i'm telling you say you're in burleson new jersey and it's critical loads time sensitive loads in which a broker or customer is trying to meet certain requirements you could be the only truck in the area. Depending on how, however you have your account set up, say if it's DAT, whether you have it set up for emails or whether you have it set up for phone calls, I'm telling you, they're gonna be blowing you up. 
and this is your time to negotiate the ball is in your court if you want to load that's worth two three five hundred dollars more i'm telling you the right person will match you it just depends on who so post your truck leverage 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 is key the next thing is say if you ran certain loads for customers or brokers right and they may have load availability or like a freight list that they email daily or they email weekly some of those loads i guarantee you may not even hit the load board so you could have access to it by email and all you gotta do is it's a it's literally a phone call away you know especially if you ran efficiently with the prior or previous load the ball is in your court once again the last few things i want y'all to take from this is know your worth and don't settle for less as y'all can see up here on the screen i've posted a few loads that were mind-boggling there was one load for a known operator now there was one load that was posted for like 72 cents per mile and it was it was well over 600 miles and i'm thinking like in my mind what are you profiting aside from also what are you spending from fuel you know so just be vigilant of what you're accepting and know your cost per mile. Have a fuel card with reasonable discounts. For those who are wondering, I was in Burlington, New Jersey out of this BJ's never again type of experience because I was there literally the whole day. And in this case, either we hire a lumper to break down uh, two to three pallets of batteries or I do it myself and I got paid it was worth what I got paid so I, that's why I did it myself and it wasn't bad all I had to do was separate the 9v8 from the AA28 and like I said it was two to three pallets now had I known this before I took this load from Fairburn Georgia to New Jersey would I have done it I don't know but it wasn't that bad and sometimes the extra money well, the exercise doesn't hurt too much, so that's the video. It was Driver Appreciation Week, and they blessed us with snacks like no other. I'm going to leave y'all with this, and it's more so, I mentioned this on my Instagram, but you can do it. Fulfilling certain aspirations, superseding what seems like an impossible dream, you can do it. A lot of the owner operators now that are able to stay afloat are the ones that are moving very calculated, you know? They analyze certain rates, they're with the company or they have their own authority and they're not settling for less. Those are the happiest ones, the one in most control, the ones with the most freedom, the ones with the least amount of overhead, the ones who, you know, they don't have a reason to complain about anything. They stay out of the way and they say to themselves, so you can do it. It is possible to get through these market conditions without taking 72 cents per mile loads. That's not even covering your fuel. You can do it. I promise you, you can. So do what you love, love what you do. Let it work best for you. And until the next, stay safe. And if no one is really supporting you, support yourself, baby. Be your biggest support. Yeah, man. Stay safe. <laughs>